Uh, oh, they're not there yet. Now they're there. Facebook. Welcome. Welcome, Facebook. Who who all have we got? Let's see. Man, Vortex Photography. I think that's Cameron Keller. Is that right? Or is Vortex Photography Cameron? All right, we're live now. Live action. We're on. All right, so a couple of things that we need to uh, do. Instagram, let me see, like, Instagram, I think I need to be right here for you. We've got three different cameras that we're looking at. Um, and so it's a little bit crazy, but we're still getting to uh, get used to all of this. And we just heard, like, live news, breaking news. The governor of the great state of Georgia has uh, closed school, I think, through the end of the year, right? Is that That's right. I don't know if you've not That's heard that seems. yet. If um, if you haven't, I'm sorry, parents, for breaking the news to your kid. Uh, don't even know what that means or looks like, but it sounds like school is out for the rest of the year. Not out, but just not on campus. That's so right. you still have to do schoolwork. Um, actually, you know what I heard? Um, I heard that, like, there, like, no school next year. Whoa. Really? Yeah, I, I heard my, no I hear my speakers year. over here. No school next year. Man, from a so, reliable source, you think? Reliable source, yes, I think so. So, stu and I also heard this. Uh-oh. So, 2020 is done. Like 2021 is done. This is the crazy part. 2022 is also done. There, there will be no school on campus 2020, 2021, and also 2022. Wow. Online learning only and here's what they're doing they're like man i play sports what should i do about my sports and stuff they're creating new athletic events that will be played online only it's like madden you can play madden and that's how you get scholarships well, kind of but like you've got to instagram live or facetime with the opposing team but not only that is you've got to like facetime live with your teammates and then like everybody just puts a phone out at a position and you do i mean it's just crazy so um but also some exciting news that we've got going on on this train by the way i, I wonder how many people are still with us april fools, it like, is april fools. It's, uh, it's only 2020 so we're not sure about 2021 2022 here's what we do know about 2021 and 2022 you know what it is bring it jesus is on the throne that's it that's all that matters right all of the uncertainties in this world um, they are what they are. They're, I mean, there's uncertainties, but why dwell on the uncertainties when you know the certain one? So we're just, we're focusing on Christ. We're focusing on the fact that he's risen. Easter's coming up. We can't be together, it doesn't look like, but we can be together in this mm -hmm. way and we can still worship um, a risen Savior. Um, I also had some feedback. We're, we're learning all this game, but stuff like that and then my coffee sipping. Doesn't do well. No, because it really picks up good. So You guys just um, ruined my coffee for the night. Be careful. But I still love you. So here's some other news, though. Um, camp this year, a little bit a different of a twist this year for camp. Mm. Um, instead of going to Laguna Beach, we're going on a cruise, camp Whoa. cruise. Camp cruise. Yeah, I think also <laughs> uh -oh. mission trip. Spring break was a no go. Appalachian Trail. How about how would you like to to go hike some volcanic trails in the great state of Hawaii? Yeah, I'd love to go trip. do mission work in Hawaii. Free mission trip to Hawaii. So camp cruise, um, Disney camp cruise. I don't know. I don't know what. I'm I don't okay know what the that. best cruise is. Whatever the best cruise is, that's what we're doing. Hawaii mission trip. Um, also, April Fools. <laughs> None of that is true as well. Um, sorry about that. Um, but listen, we just wanted to welcome you into the rock. This is totally different. This is totally strange. This is awkward. I'm not getting used to it. We're not meant to get used to this because this is not how the church is supposed to be together. Um, but thankfully, God has given us this great technology that we can still be together even when we can't be together. So we're thanking him for that. We're going to pray in just a minute. But we did want to um, catch up with you for a second. Um, and Instagram users, I will say this yet again. The best viewing experience is going to come from Facebook. Facebook Live is where it's at, unfortunately, for um, viewing this, um, The Rock Live. So if you got a Facebook account, jump over there. You can see it a little bit better. Um, but if you're like, no, I love Instagram way more, then right that's here. cool. You're just going to have to get used to 
to all of this, which is why we've got the AirPods in. That way the phone can be far away, but you can still hear us. And m minutes before we went live, we had the idea of using the same set of AirPods, but then we quickly learned that only one microphone works. So that was, that was bad. Here's what we need some help from. We need help from you to do this. Tonight is all about friendships. We're talking about um, being in relationships with one another. Last week was dating. Tonight is friendships. Next week is the home. Hmm. That's going to be fun for parents and students watching together. Um, but then the last week is everybody else that we could have a relationship with. Long distance, distant. I mean, we barely know them. We know them kind of well. They're in our class or whatnot. Um, but those are the four groups, dating, friends, home, everyone else. Tonight is all about friendships. Here's what we need to know from you. What are, we need you to give us some names. What are some of the most famous friendship duos of all time? All right. Mm. Now, I'm going to throw one out there. I don't even know if they were friends, but they were like partners. So you got to imagine that they were, oh, I'm going to throw out two sets because I know these guys are friends. Andy and Barney. Andy Griffith Show. Of like, course. So, so, huh? Of course. Of that's, course. That's I thought it. you said Forrest. That's Forrest and Bubba. Forrest. We're oh, going to take Forrest them all up. So totally. we, we need you to respond. So just comment. Andrew's got the Instagram. I can get the Facebook. Name some of the, the, the most famous friendship duos of all time, and we'll use these later. Some other things are, are this, like this is an opportunity for you to, to uh, either brag on your friends or throw them under the bus. One or the other. So some friends superlatives. So we're going to name some, some characteristics or some attitudes, behaviors, some things. And what we want you to do is to tag a friend either on Facebook. I don't know if you can do this live. Tony said you could, maybe you can. But like in the comments, tag them at whatever their name is. And if you don't know their tag name or what username, <laughs> just tag them. And if you don't know their username, just like just call them out. But this is a cool way to also invite them to the stream after the fact that you've called them out. So I will say this. So uh, who is the friend that like your parents really don't want coming over. Like, oh like when you say, hey, can so-and-so come over? Like, your parents are like, well, I mean. Speaking of friendships, yeah. this is where they are broken. <laughs> yeah, so maybe that's not a good one. I thought it was a good one. I Do like you have it. one? I like it. What? Who's who's the most dependable friend you've got? Who can uh, you depend on for anything? Serious. So, yeah, uh, who's the friend that you can depend on to do anything? I mean, if you need something done and you ask this friend, they will do it. Who is the biggest cut-up? Like mm -hmm. the biggest jokester in your friend group, go ahead and like call them out at whatever their username tag name. I can't believe I said tag name of uh, username is. So like who, who's the friend that takes the most talking to your parents to get them to actually let you invite them and have them over? Who's the most dependable? Who's the biggest jokester? Who's the biggest neat freak? Uh -huh, like, everything one. has to be like squeaky clean. Everything is just in order and pressed and nice. I don't know that students like iron and stuff, but like who's the neatest and um, who's the sloppiest? <laughs> Who's like the pig friend that you have? You love all these guys, right? You love them, and you fight on their behalf to make your parents let them come over. Um, but, like, just tag some of these friends. You got another one? Yeah. No, I don't. Oh, That's yeah, all no? I got. I don't yeah. know. That's what, all you got? No. What, who, who, who's the, I don't know, clumsiest? Who's the clumsiest friend that you've got? Who's Ooh. always tripping over stuff, always falling over At stuff? At Madeline Turner. Oh, that, it's I there. I think so. She gets it honestly from her dad. Um, I mean, like, I think they would admit that. I don't think they're mad. We no, I think them. it's, you know. you know this about yourself, and you're proud of it. You are who you are. What would you be? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, like, what would you be? I think you would be most dependable. Whoa, man, dude. Yeah. I would say similarly. I don't know what I would be. I think you would be. Um, Hold on. What I, do you oh, think I we would this. be? What oh, would we be? This is Let not going to be good. No. This is not All right, well, you good. tell me mine then. What is mine? You are a most utility player. You could do anything <laughs> at any time. Utility. Jose Akindo was my favorite, one of my favorite baseball players. He played every position in and and Did it all. In, like, That's Chris all. Altman in the church, in the home, doing me. anything. That's so here's some player. things. I've already mentioned head to Facebook if, if you really want to see this in its best setting all right the rock sm so it's facebook.com forward slash the rock sm um and you can watch us there it's a great thing um so tonight on the website you can get our notes if i were at the computer i could show you again but it's, it's fine just go to the rock sm.org and you'll see the rock devotions kind of big picture and you'll see notes so if you click that it'll open up our notes it'll be there but you can also hit this downloadable pdf link and you can have the notes for tonight where you can walk through what we're walking through together through scripture on friendships. But 
this will be on the blog it's already on the website so if you don't want to take time to get it now you can get it later we mentioned spring break trip unfortunately it was not an april fool's joke it is canceled um mainly because of the virus and the isolation and the um, staying in the place, or what is it? It's not stay in place. What's the shelter, shelter in place? In place. Um, which means stay in place. So we obviously cannot go to the to the mountains to uh, minister to the hikers, and so um, that's unfortunate. I do want to encourage you to get on the Rock Devotions, the Rock Daily. It's on the website every Monday. We upload a week's worth of devotions. We're walking through Psalm 119. It's this incredible chapter, um, highlighting the Word of God, and we see the psalmist just really pouring his heart out almost in every angle that you could possibly address the Word of God and appreciate the Word of God. He's doing that. We're, we're joining him on that journey, as well as some extra reading at the end of the devotion in the Gospel of Luke, um, just in the Easter journey, just following, walking with Christ on his way to the cross and then the tomb and then afterwards. And we'll finish up in the book of Acts with that. Um, tomorrow, lastly, is our lunch hang. So we did this last week. We had about I don't know, 25, 30 of you students come and join us during your lunch break. And it's just some popped in, popped out. And, uh, yeah, it was chaotic. We had, you know, 30 people talking. And so we played some games. We gave away some sweatshirts. And uh, so just come hang with us tomorrow at 12 o'clock on Zoom. Um, we will put that code out in the blog tomorrow. We'll put it out on Instagram tonight. Uh, we'll make sure you have that. Um, so come and join us for that. So with that in mind, tonight... Um, Tony is going to share with us just a little bit about um, what's next for us. Not much has changed, but first I want to pray for us. Um, and here's what's going to happen in just a second. We're going to take a little bit of a break, maybe about a minute or so break, because we've got to restart Instagram. Um, that way they make sh- we make sure that they join us for the full time um, tonight. So um, if you're on Facebook, we'll, we've just let you know. So um, after Tony gets done, we're just going to pause for as long as it takes us to restart our Instagram, Instagram um, live, and then we'll be back and jump into tonight. So that would be a great time for you to grab your Bible, grab a notebook, go get the notes on the laptop, and you can see them there, um, because we don't just want to do this just to do it and to set up cameras and to do live. Like we're continuing our walk and our discipling um, of you and of our own hearts as well. We're coming together as the church should um, to be filled, to be um, fueled, to be encouraged, to be challenged, to be discipled so that we can put these things into actions. Remember James, you know, don't be hearers of the word only, but be doers. So we can still do this life in the midst of shelter in place, in the midst of isolation. So we can still do this stuff. You're relating every day with people online. So may tonight help us and encourage us and challenge us as we think about how we ought to be relating as friends. Mm -hmm. And these are our close friends, people that we walk with daily um, and we see often and we care for deeply. Uh, So let me pray for the night. Tony's going to jump in and just remind us about some stuff um, actually, Tony, why don't you go ahead and do that? Why don't you go ahead and just like tell us some of the things, the Sunday opportunities mm-hmm. and, and different things, and then I'll pray after that. Yeah, cool. So a couple of things going on. Nothing that's changed like Chris has said, um, but a couple of cool things that if you're not plugged in with the church at all, or if you don't have a church at all, or if you are plugged in with the church, here's three things that you got to remember. Uh, the first thing is this, Sunday school. Uh, we love meeting in Sunday school classes, uh, life groups, whatever you want to call them, but we can't right now um, physically. However, what we are doing is meeting on Google Hangout. Um, check with the Sunday school teacher if you're not connected to a Sunday school class. Uh, DM us on the Rock Instagram. DM Chris, me, text us, do whatever you want to do. Uh, tell us, let us know, and we'll get you connected on that. You can find those on tomorrow. There will be an email sent out churchwide, and you can go on uh, rootbillroad.org, scroll down just a little bit, and then it says something like connect with a Sunday school class. So, man, connect with a Sunday school class. I know that you guys are starving like we are to be together, and that's just another way to be together. Um, right after Sunday school class, we'll do Sunday morning worship together. Um, check out Facebook Live or Instagram Live and um, connect with us. Worship together with the saints at the same time from your home. It's not often that you actually get to sit in your PJs, drink coffee during worship service. Um, like you could, it may just be a little odd, but now you can do yeah. that right now. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and then something else we're starting back up is Sunday night. Sunday night series is, is back in and rolling. Uh, walking through the book of Acts as we were looking at the church growing the gospel going out. It's an exciting series. Um, so we get to hear from Chris uh, this Sunday night. This Sunday night at 7, 
Um, you can check out the church website, check out uh, what YouTube Live, where no, all we got it at. It'll be put on Facebook, and it'll be put on our church website. So there it go is. there and be a part of uh, walking through Acts chapter 5. It's a great chapter. I actually just finished preaching it like 30 minutes ago. And so it's <laughs> over there on the tonight. computer. It's getting ready, and it's going to be released Sunday night at 7. So Yeah, be Sunday's cool. full of opportunities. And the last thing is this, is Wednesday nights. You are in the middle of this right now. Um, even though you guys are not at school to be able to invite people to come to the rock tonight what you can do is tag them in these kind of things uh let them know it's fixing to happen it happens every wednesday night 6 45 whether we're meeting in here or whether we're meeting online so uh text your friends right now as we fixing to go uh read some scripture really quick we're gonna pray we're gonna get all this stuff reset take a second to text them and say hey look jump on with the rock uh instagram or or facebook live feed and, and join us tonight um, so one thing that we're going to talk about tonight is is friendships, and, and one of the ways that friendships works the best is as it is uh, as, as friendships are built around um, Jesus, as they are built around um, being the people of God. And so uh, we find this beautiful scripture, this Psalm in in Psalm twenty eight, um, Psalm twenty eight eight and nine. Here's what it says, uh, and I think it kind of sets the tone for for tonight. Uh, and it says this: The Lord is the strength of His people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Oh, save your people, the psalmist says, and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. So now we're going to see that we're not supposed to be in isolation. What we're doing right now, the shelter in place thing, is totally against our nature. Mm -hmm. We are meant to be together. And thankfully, we have technology to be able to do that. And so mm -hmm. that's our prayer tonight is that the Lord would save us and the Lord would, 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 would bless his name. Yeah. So let me pray for us, and then uh, we'll restart Instagram, and then we'll jump in into the night. God, we're thankful for you, Father, um, for the many blessings that you've given to us in the midst of things that don't really feel like blessings. Um, so, Father, give us eyes to see those things that um, maybe we're not perceiving to be good things, but um, we know that, that you are watching out for us. You're protecting us. You're sovereign. Um, in our lives and we can trust you you're able you're not surprised by any of this and so we walk through this with you and for you and so tonight specifically as we open your word and we um, look at friendships we know that you care about these and and you want to be honored in and through these things so um, help us teach us lead us to uh, make some tough decisions um, encourage us to maintain what we're already nurturing and um, taking care of um, but ultimately, Father, we want you to be honored and glorified. You know, this, is, this is not the normal, but for now, it's our new normal. Um, and so as we do this, may we be serious about it, not be flippant, not be tuning in, tuning out, but we'll, we'll dial in to what your word speaks to us about our friendships. And then at the end of the night, may we act accordingly, Father. So we love you. We thank you for this night and technology that we can do this. And uh, we pray that you're honored through it all. And we pray these things in the name of Christ. Amen. Um, so Andrew is, is working. You'll see his hand there at the bottom of the screen, Facebook people. So he's working on getting uh, Instagram back. And um, I don't know what, oh, my phone. Well, no, that was his phone. So here's what we're doing. Uh, Facebook, you can still help us. Here's what, um, if you'll scroll up on some of the comments, some of the things that you're seeing um, are like some of these famous friendship duos of all time. Um, so what are some of those? We're going to use those in a minute. We're going to acknowledge some of those that are there. There's one of them, one of them that is like a favorite of mine. Um, are y'all right back there? I mean, like the behind-the-scenes stuff right now is crazy. Um, y'all are bad at lying, Jana said. What if? Um, so anyway, so we got, a, we got a good crew on Facebook. Are we going yet on Instagram? Yes. We're going. So we're already there. So Instagram people, you can comment too. Andrew, uh, pull your comments off. Um, as soon as he gets back around here. Um, so here, here's where we're at um, with friendships. Friendships, well, let's go back to the beginning of the series. And to me, uh, this is so timely. A lot of people, and it's a good thing, they're doing really specific series or sermons um, or devotions and stuff that really speak to what we're going through right now. And, and while that is good and that there's nothing wrong with that, we really chose to stick with our original series that we had, had planned if Everybody's here tonight at The Rock in person going through the series of, of We Be. Speaking about relationships, because that's one of the major things that's really being challenged for us right now. 
is the relationships that we had, if we're dating somebody, I mean, like, that's, that's kind of like up in the air right now. Or we're having to learn to do that a little bit differently. And, and, and our view of dating is being challenged. You know, what determines love for one another? And mm-hmm. the same with friends. Friend, our friendships, our little circles, the ones that we're used to running with and being with all the time, that's being challenged right mm-hmm. now because we're not able to be together. So relationships are huge in our current situation really speaks to that and is evident that uh, is evidence of the fact that relationships for us are huge so some big questions that we want to answer in this series are this how how am i to live and to be in relationship when christ is in focus like i'm seeing him clearly i understand him deeply so how do i do relationships when he is in focus and when he is my focus when he's the direction that i long to go for that i'm pursuing currently in my life and i don't want to stray off that path when he's in focus and he is my focus how should my relationships be and then even more specifically what is the healthy and godly way for those relationships to to be so dating that's what we hope to to look at last week what is healthy dating look like what is what is godly dating look like how can i you know, love God and love these other people. So we hit dating last week, and you can catch that on YouTube. You can watch it on our Facebook um, channel. Next week, the home, and two weeks, everybody else. But tonight, we're headed to friendships, which is a huge one. Not everybody's dating, but everybody has friends, hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Andrew's going to kind of bring that up in a minute. But I can say everybody that's watching this has a friend. You can have a friend, okay? So let's think about this. Like, what about some famous duos, famous friendship duos? We ask, and you delivered, and so here are a few. So we'll kind of go back and forth. Does, does Instagram have any? We restarted, but I, I, got, I got a good one. Somebody threw out Napoleon, Dynamite, and Pedro. Man, I like That's that. That's classic. I mean, I yeah. would have never thought about who that. Who did that? Um, possibly Walker, but I can't remember yeah, I, exactly I who it was. It. We've got to vote for Pedro Magnet <laughs> that used to be on a oh, refrigerator be before then. we got a new refrigerator. Vote Suzanne for Pedro. didn't allow magnets on the refrigerator anymore. Really? Yeah. Let's call them out. So here's another one. Woody and Buzz. Oh, that's a good yes. one. Toy Story, Woody and Buzz. I was, first I was thinking yes. Woody Woodpecker, but it's, Wood, it's different. <laughs> Tom and Jerry. Um, so Stephanie Rainwater's on the cartoon kick. Bert and Ernie, uh-huh. Sesame Street. I like that. Mike and Sully. Look at this. The Rainwater. Stephanie Rainwater is, I, I, I guess it's Stephanie. Um, it could be any other ones. But you got any more from Instagram? No, they can, I, don't, like, I don't. Instagram have people, jump on the train. We lost your comments. So we'll let you catch Bob. up. I'll go with mine. This is it. Bob and Rob. All right. Who said that? Michaela Watkins. Okay. So Garrett Easton said it too. So Bob and Rob, here's, here's like, we heard April Fools or not, like I, I'm, I'm their friends on Instagram too, and I've been following this. And they put out an Instagram post a couple of weeks ago, and it said, "Get us a hundred likes, and we'll do an Instagram live or something." They didn't get the likes. I haven't seen it. They only got like you didn't see it. Do you follow mm-hmm. them on Instagram? I do. Yeah. Oh, go and follow them. So they didn't get it. So I was thinking, well, that stinks. They're not going to be able to do this. They, they, like, I heard that they were requested to do, like, an Instagram Live. Everybody's wanting to know what Bob and Rob think about, like, social distancing <laughs> or sheltering in place and stuff. They're so, probably doing neither. I don't know. So maybe look for that um, as we go. Lilo and Stitch, another Stephanie Rainwater. Ooh, yes. Pooh Bear and Christopher. Yeah, SpongeBob and Patrick. <laughs> Chip and Bob Dale. And Lucy and Ethel. Ethel. <laughs> Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Rainwater. Tonto and Long Ranger. <laughs> Not Long. Long. Long Ranger. Um, that's good. Timon and Pumbaa, did you say that? Ethel and Lucy. Um, that's a lot to throw back. Um, so what about the whole Friends cast? Um, oh, what yeah, about, what about Jerry and George and Kramer and Elaine? I mean, so them. what about those? So, I mean, those are some good ones. Um, but then we didn't even hit, like, I didn't hear any, like, biblical ones. What about, like, you know, John and Peter? What about uh-huh. Jesus? He had, like, 12. And what about... You know, you can, like David and Goliath, I almost yeah, said that, but that, like oh, they weren't friends. David they were and, uh, frenemies. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Jonathan. That's right. Jonathan, right? It's Jonathan. Jonathan. Is it jo- it's Jonathan. I think so. It is Jonathan. Uh, so there's tons of friendships in, in Scripture. Uh, we know that they're so important to us. But here's the truth that, you know, is it, scary, but it's, it's, it's a true statement. Friends are your biggest influencers, period. 
Mm-hmm. Um, your parents are influences. Uh, Jesus is an influence. The Bible is an influence. But more, more times than not, who you hang with, your friends, those guys are the biggest influencers. Mm-hmm. They will influence you to do things that you never thought you could, never thought you would, never thought you would want to. Um, but which which is are. a good thing and a bad thing. Man, it's, it, it can go either way. Um, but here, here's an interesting thing. You know what the first problem in all of Scripture was? It was solitude. You know, solitude is a good thing, but being alone isn't always a mm-hmm. good thing. And you remember in the garden, we had Adam and only Adam. And what did God say? It's, it's not good that you're alone. It's not good for him to be alone. Mm-hmm. So that was the first issue in Scripture that we see God addressing was this issue of being alone. And it wasn't a good thing. So we, we kind of learned from that that friendships are intended. Um, they're good, but they can turn and be mm-hmm. bad from the deepest joys to the deepest truths, friendships remind us of the gospel. Mm. I think it, the most important thing we'll say tonight is as, as a great, healthy, godly friendship is a beautiful thing and is a perfect and clear picture of the gospel. So here's another thing. We've got parents who maybe just like had their kid watch tonight or the student watch tonight, and uh, that's kind of under me. But here's the deal. Friendships is not a middle school or a high school thing. It's not a college thing. It's not an adult thing. It's not a, just a senior adult thing. It's a us thing. It's a people thing because mm-hmm. everybody's lives at some point is revolving around or is, is having in the midst of it this issue with friendships, you know, good, bad, and different we have friends in every area of our lives, some good, some not. So what we've got to do is we've got to go a little bit deeper, and that's what we want to do tonight, go a little bit deeper to the heart of the matter as it pertains to our friendships. We want to bring all of our friendships, put it on the pedestal, put it on the witness stand, and just bring them under subjection and make sure that these things are healthy, they're godly, and they're leading us to Christ. Mm-hmm. So friendships is where we're headed tonight. Yeah, so the question that we're chasing tonight, what, 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 makes, a good, what makes a good friend? What makes a bad friend? Um, the friends that I have right now, should I keep them or should I kick them to the curb? Not in a bad way, but it's no doubt. There are some relationships, friendships in your life right now that you shouldn't have, that you shouldn't be acquainted with. It's not good for you and your walk with Jesus. So those are things we're asking. So tonight we got four reminders on friendships, four points that we would say, look, here's what you need to know about friendships. The cool thing is we're asking this question, what does the Bible say about friendships? Where do, where do we look? I, I don't see the word friend a ton in the Bible, um, but the cool thing is, is it's there and we can, we can go from two incredible places. One, one is Proverbs. It's the book of wisdom in the Old Testament. And then we go straight from Jesus's mouth uh, in the New Testament. So the first thing is this. Uh, the first thing is friends influence. Uh, so if you've got your Bible, your phone, whatever you're using, go to, go to Proverbs 12, 26. Proverbs 12, um, 26. I'll give it just a second. Dun, 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 dun. Here's what it says. Proverbs 12, 26. One who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor. But the way of the wicked leads them astray. One who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor. And the, one, the way of the wicked, though, leads them astray. There's two parts to this. We want to hit the very first part right now. The, the, the righteous is a guide to his neighbor. Here's what he's saying. Look, if you walk with the wise, that you will become more wise, right? The, the first thing we must say is, is the truest friend, the best friend that you could have is one that is righteous, right? Righteous meaning in Christ and is leading. Leading you in in righteousness, right? In our walk with Christ, we need those people around us who will help us to walk with them. We need mm-hmm. people like us, like us as in in, in, in in a common faith, right? Professing faith in Jesus, following after Jesus. We need those people in our lives. We we've got to surround ourselves with people who will who will drive us closer to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right? It's the first part of the verse. Yeah, and then what I like about that, that it says one who is righteous is the guide to his neighbor, but there's a footnote in my Bible. And I think, you know, it, it kind of goes on to a, a little bit different of a reading. And it says the righteous chooses his friends mm-hmm. carefully. So you got to be careful because there's the flip side, the second part of this. But the way of the wicked leads them astray. So you see two sides mm-hmm. of this friendship stuff. Um, but the second part, it says the wicked will lead astray. Having a fool as a companion leads to harm. 
if you go to the jail, and, and, and Brother Stephen tells us all the time, and I know Stephanie's watching this, she, she would go with him um, to the jail and just visit. And, you know, if you ask those people or if you ask anybody that's just in trouble and say, all right, so what are some of the things that led to this point? Well, I mean, in that statement, you're going to hear a lot of things. One of the things you'll always hear is, I was hanging around the wrong crowd. Bad friends aren't just a thing that's indifferent. Ah, oh, that's not very good. No, they're straight up dangerous. Mm-hmm. Right? They're poison. It's toxic stuff here, right? It's not good for us at all. They tempt us, and then ultimately they lead us away from Christ. So friends influence one another. Uh, 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 and you as students, and really us as adults, like you, keeping up with the Joneses is the married portion of that, mm-hmm. is the adulthood of that. We're influenced by our friends in a major way, and this can be a good thing. A great thing, but it can also be a bad, wicked, I mean, life-taking situation. So this is not a call for you to immediately drop all your bad friends, but you do need to guard your heart Mm -hmm. when you're around them, all right, or from them. Or like you may need to consider, all right, what needs to change in this relationship, all right? You need to influence them more than then they mm-hmm. are influencing you because it's always easier. And if we could like be closer to the six foot, we would do like a little illustration or at this time, don't try this at home either, but it, it's easier to pull someone down than it is to pull somebody up. So here's the question around the first point. What kind of influence do your friends have on you? Like think about that just for a second. I'm going to let it sit. I want you to think like what are some ways that your friends have influenced you lately. And then I want you to think through, all right, were those good things or were those bad things? Were those things that were drawing my heart closer to Christ and and the gospel or pushing me a little bit further away, wanting me to challenge some things that I know to be true about God's word and and behaviors and stuff? So what kind of influence have, have your friends had on you and then spin that around on you? What kind of influence have you been on some of your friends. So first point and first thing we need to know about friendships are that friends influence one another. So yeah. number two. Friends influence. Secondly, friends provide accountability, right? We were to have accountability partners. Shout out again. Look at look at Proverbs twenty seven, five through six. Proverbs twenty seven. Proverbs twenty seven, five through six. Got right? It. Friends provide accountability. Man, we got, we got a Bible winner right there. Five through six. Better is an open rebuke, right? A correction than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. One of the greatest things that, that a friend, a true friend, right? A godly friend can do for you, that can do for me, us, is to correct us. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I hate it when people tell me, well, tell me what to do. I hate it when my parents go tell me to do this or stop doing it. I get it. But here's the deal. We need that, we need that in our lives. We are, we are, in our friendships, supposed to push each other to holiness, supposed to push each other closer to Christ, to strive for holiness, to push others to do all that brings God glory, right? This proverb shows us that a, a friend who tells you, look, you are wrong, who corrects you when you're doing wrong, when you say wrong, when you've got wrong motives. And that's one of the best friends that you can have. It's a friend that you need, right? Friendship can be really difficult at this point, but but we need it. True true friendship takes patience. It takes work. Yeah, and you, you can't be lazy in friendships. And I'm not talking about, like, not getting them a Coke or, like, not willing <laughs> to go to their house. But I'm, 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 I'm talking about, like, you got to be re- willing to fight, mm-hmm. not them, but with them, for them, for their for their souls and their hearts. Remember the ending of James when it talks about, you know, someone who, who, who warns the brother that's falling? I mean, just think that you've snatched them from the fire. Like We've got to be willing to run into some fires for our friends. And, and that's what really separates I know you or, and I belong to mm-hmm. you kind of a deal. When you think about friendship, so you've got to, you've got to be patient rather than, than lazy. Um, you've got to be gracious versus selfish. I mean, it can't be about you gaining things. So I want to ask the question here, when you think about accountability, like what does your accountability look like to your friends? You know, we asked the question, what does, you know, how are your friends influencing you and, and what does your influence on your friends look like? But then let's draw it to accountability. Mm-hmm. Like what does your accountability look like? I know that that may be a popular answer and, and people are saying, you know, well, we need accountability and accountability is always the answer. But like, let's think about that for a second. What does accountability look like? And maybe that's a good 
you know, lesson, Bible study, or devotion, or I'm going to search it on my own. What, what, what does mm-hmm. true accountability look like? Because it's not just saying, hey, man, how, how are things? Okay, good. And then you just leave it, all right? Um, because, like, I guess that's where the rubber meets the road, too. Like, in my accountability, now, I, I know I should ask this question, but if I do, it's going to lead to this. And, I mean, I, I got, I'm, I'm going to play Madden later on tonight, and, you know, i got to do this, yeah. or well, I'd rather do this. I can't be lazy, and, and you got to be patient. You can't be selfish, but you got to be gracious mm-hmm. in, in all of these things. So don't skip the hard work in friendships and accountability, or don't leave when it gets bad, right? When you're, you're, you know when your friend needs you the most? is when they need you the most. It's when they're hurting. Or when everybody else walks away, guess what? You'll know who your friends are at that point. Mm-hmm. So persevere. Push to Christ. Friends influence. Friends provide accountability. And then thirdly. Yeah, thirdly, friendships should be marked by love and sacrifice. Two, two huge attributes, love and sacrifice. Right? Think about who your friends are. Who, who loves the most? Who, who sacrifices the most? Turn to uh, John. We're going to look at Jesus' words really quick. John um, 15, right? An incredible and a famous chapter. Um, John 15, verses 12 through 13. John 15, 12 through 13. We're going we're gonna to camp out in this passage for, for a few minutes. Um, look at verse 12. Here's what he says. This is my commandment, Jesus says, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that somebody lay down his life for his friends. Here we, we find Jesus describing what a true friend looks like. Right now, we're not just saying he's only talking about friends. This is the life of a Christian. This is what it looks like to be a Christian. But specifically, as we're talking about friends, here's what it looks like to be a friend. You are to love one another, and you are to sacrifice for one another, right? Often our, our friendships and our relationships, regardless of what they are, can be marked by the self-seeking love. Well, I'm only going to do that if I get something in return. Or I'll be your friend if I get these things, or you do these things for me. Right? That's self-seeking love. That's totally opposite of what Jesus is talking about here. Right? Listen to the depth of the love that a true friend has. Listen, listen to this. Greater love has none than this, that someone lay down his life. That's a big deal, guys. Right now, here's what we're not saying. We're, we're probably not going to be called to like, give our lives to death for, for your friend. But here, here's the question, though. Is your heart willing to do that? Are you willing to give your life for someone that you love, right? We, we find this incredible, incredible picture of, of, of Jesus doing this, right? Putting himself second, right? As he steps on the cross and takes away our sin, he dies in our place. There's no greater picture of, of love and sacrifice than to find that culminating in, in, in what Jesus has done on the cross. Do we do that? Do we do that for our friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think going a step further, too, would be, you know, like I, I like the way you turn that as friendship should be marked by love and sacrifice. And we're going to hear that again. I think a different way to say it is what we said at the beginning, like friendships, godly friendships ought to be redemptive. You know, when, when you think about flawed people being involved in a relationship, um, the give and take that's got to be there. If, you, if you're not forgiving, if you're not loving, if you're not gracious, if you're not merciful in the midst of that relationship, that relationship will not work. So a friendship has got to be redemptive. It, it, I don't want to walk around in fear, mm-hmm. you know, with you, my friend. Um, you know, I'm hoping I don't fail today because I don't want them to walk away. That should not be mm-hmm. what that relationship is marked by. In the same way for dating last week and, and thinking about Suzanne and mine relationship, like I don't walk around like fearing, you know, to not impress her anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to do something. I'm going to wake up with bad breath one morning or my <laughs> hair is going to be all out of whack and she's going to see me and she's going to walk away. No, because I know her love is deeper than mm-hmm. that. And that's the way of a friend. A, a friendship is redemptive. I mean, and I think it means this. We must forgive or we'll never be friends. We can't relate if forgiveness is not available, right? So these redemptive friendships, they test our faith, they try us, and then they allow us to display the beautiful picture of the gospel, this act of grace, this act of forgiveness, mercy, and love. So these friendships should remind us of Christ's love for us, and I think that's why it goes so far, John does, and, and, and you know, letting us know what Jesus is saying, and is like, you know, greater love has no one, you know, than this, and when he's willing to lay down his life, to give up his very soul, his heart, his life, his bread, 
for his friends. So it's a beautiful picture. So here's the question then for this. Like, think about your friendships. Think about the influence. Think about the accountability. And think about what they're marked by. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the basis of the friendships that you have? You'll begin to rank your friendships, right? Mm -hmm. But think about those close circles. What marks those close circles? Is it a sport? Is it a class? Is it a what? A status, you know? Or is it the gospel? And so our friendships should be marked by love and by sacrifice. They should be redemptive yep. um, in nature. So, yep. and then lastly, friendships. Yeah, we stay in the same passage. This is that we find from Jesus uh, again that that Jesus is our greatest friend, right? Look at look at verses fourteen through seventeen. Uh, staying in John fifteen fourteen through seventeen. Here's what Jesus says: That you are my friends. If what? If you do what I've commanded you. Verse 15, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Verse 16, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that that, that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask in in the name of the Father, he may give it to you. These things I have commanded you so that you would love one Another. Here, here's the deal. Ultimately, Chris said this at the beginning, ultimately you may feel like you don't have any friends. As we walk down through this list, you don't feel like you've got anybody that influences you. You feel like you don't have anybody to help hold you accountable. You can't hold anybody else accountable. Right? You feel like there's nobody in this world that loves you. There's nobody in this world that would be willing to sacrifice you. And here's the greatest truth of the gospel is that God cares so much enough ab- about us that he sent his son so that he would be your friend, ultimately through what he did on the cross, mm-hmm. right? That he died and he rose so that we could, we could be conjoined with him, so we could have peace with the Father. We can't say that there's nobody that cares about us, that we don't have a friend because we do have a friend, right? We have a friend in, in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think <laughs> there's a there's a great song. That's right. Do you, go for it. Do you remember the song? Do yes. You, do, no, you don't. You're just telling me that. No, I True am. friends aren't. They're not I'm, marked by lies. So Jesus is I'm, a friend of mine. As we were writing this, oh, I'm thinking, I, mm-hmm. you got a friend. In oh, me. also, That's friends a, are friends yeah. forever. But I was thinking of the like, YouTube. Get your parents' presi- uh, uh, permission, and then go search. Jesus is a friend of mine. All right, it's just a theme song for oh. tonight. You, you do it. Ask your mom later when you get home Perfect. if you uh, can search I'll text uh, her when YouTube. We're done. Yeah, text her when you're done. Um, but on a serious oh, note, I'm like Jesus is, he's a friend. I mean, he tells us this. Like, we, if we, we trust the word of God, then we've got to trust it when he says, You are my friends. But there's condition, right? Mm-hmm. If, you, if you do what I command, if That's you right. do and follow what I'm saying, here's the flip side of this. Like, Jesus has great competition in the friendship. You've been there. I've been there. I've done this. I've been a part of somebody else doing this to me while I'm left out. You know, there's friendships. And then when we go to making plans, I'm I'm not included in those plans. Or maybe I am. And I notice that somebody else isn't. Um, And we realize, oh, I guess I just didn't rank up there Mm -hmm. high enough to get the invitation. Now, that can really sink our ship. Or we can find our greatest hope, not in the friendships of this world, but in the friendship that I have with Christ. But the competition is when our friendships become idols, like our friendships with other people become more important than the friendship that we have um, with, the, with the Lord, with Jesus Christ. Romans 1 is, is kind of a, a good direction for this because we see this, this issue of people um, worshiping created things mm-hmm. more than they did the Creator. And like, we can apply this to friendships, which is a created thing. God has gifted us with the beauty of fr- uh, friendships. And even that has this redemptive purpose of displaying the gospel as we live. But then what happens is we take the created, the friendships, and it began, begins to rank higher mm-hmm. than the ultimate friendship and the ultimate relationship. Because that's what a friendship is at the, at the end of the day. It's a relationship. So we forsake the most important, you know, vertical relationship you know, in spite of or in light of chasing the horizontal relationships in our life. And so we've got to be careful in this. And I know what you're thinking. Like, I would never turn my back mm-hmm. on Jesus. Mm-hmm. But here's where it sinks in. You begin to relax morals or things that you would have never done. But now all of a sudden the influence 
and the lack of accountability, and it's not marked by love and sacrifice, but maybe selfishness and greed and pride, and all of a sudden this friendship that maybe started promising is challenging you in your view of who God is and, and, and the gospel of Jesus Christ and how that changes how you live. And now all of a sudden you find that you're living a different way. So we can't allow that to happen. We've got to guard our greatest mm -hmm. godly relationships and friendships. And ultimately that is the one with Jesus Christ. So really the, the last question or the, the question for this point would be this. It's simple. Are you friends with Jesus? Well, what does that mean? Like, you know, can we get, like, a define that relationship? How does that begin? Well, you, you place your trust in him. Right. You, you receive him as a Savior and Lord. You confess that you have this need for something greater than yourselves, and you place your faith in Jesus Christ, the one who has provided for you what you couldn't provide for yourself, and you follow him, and you obey him, and, and you look at all that he's commanded, all that he's taught, and you begin to apply that in your life, and daily you deny yourself, mm -hmm. and you take up your cross, and you follow him. And Jesus would say, well, that person is a friend of mine. And, and so we would say, are you that friend? Have you placed your faith in Jesus or do you take up your cross daily because you could be kind of half in half out in the sense to where, yeah, I mean, back when I was in third grade, I prayed this prayer and, and then I began to go to church and do different things. But then now it's like, you know, that was back in the past. You know, you need to go back and define that relationship with Jesus Christ. So I would go a step further and mm -hmm. almost say, is your heart, is your life hidden in Christ and are you guarding that? Mm -hmm. So those are the four points that friends influence us. Friends provide accountability. Friendships should be marked by, by love and by sacrifice. They ought to be redemptive. And then lastly is, you know, friendships, you know, are, are, are like best when my ultimate friend, my best friend is, is that of Jesus Christ. And, and here's what we said last week, and we'll say it for every relationship thing. Like if you do not have the relationship with Christ in order, no other relationship will work to its greatest potential in this life. Now, they can work for a season. But think about this. I can be in right standing with God, and this relationship has tension all the time, mm -hmm. you know. And, but we work through it, okay? Could you imagine working through issues without the vertical relationship being there? Sure. I mean, I don't know what I would do. You know, I mean, I don't know how I'd handle those things. So you've got to first get this relationship. So really, maybe this list should have gone the other direction, right? First point is Jesus is our greatest friend. Let's settle with that. Same with dating. First, before you even think about the fact that you need someone else to complete you, you need to understand your identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. Once you get that in order, then we'll begin ready to, to talk right. about dating. So once you understand that Jesus is my greatest friend, that's when you can first begin to understand what real friendship looks like. Yeah. I think that's it. So, so, so the last question is this. What do we do in light of everything that's going on, everything we've said about friendships, these four points, how, how, do, we, how do we apply this? How do we, how do we go and live this out? The first thing is this, and it's what Chris was saying, is to trust in, trust in Jesus. Trust Jesus as the greatest friend. He, here's, he's two things. One, he's the aim. He is the model friend, right? His love, his sacrifice, everything that he is, we, we want to model and, and be that. But then the second thing is this, is that he enables us to have a, a right working friendship, relationship, regardless of what it is. So first, entrust Jesus. The second thing is this, surround yourself with friends who are going to push you closer to Christ. There, are, We said it in the beginning, we'll say this for every relationship, probably except the parental relationship. There are friendships in your life right now, you may be texting them right now, that, that you, don't, you guys don't need to be together. Right? You are volatile together. Right? You need to surround yourself with friends who are going to push you closer to Christ, who are going to lead you in the right way, as the, as the proverb would say. Right? So trust in Jesus as the greatest friend. Right? Surround yourself with, with friends that are pushing you to Jesus. And the last thing is this, is you be a friend like Jesus. Right? You go live this out. Live your faith out in these friendships, in these relationships. Go and live out the gospel. What you read in the scripture, go and apply into these friendships. Love like there's no tomorrow. Love others. Sacrificially love others. Give unto others. Right. So trust in Jesus. Right? Surround yourself with friends and then, and then be that, that true friend. And, and here's what we're going to say tonight. Here's the ultimate, the ultimate takeaway, that our friendships... Right? Our relationships should be marked with love, influence, and trust that it ultimately finds its home here. Check this out. Ultimately finds its home in the gospel. 
Right? The gospel makes all of this, all of this possible. Yeah. And, and I think, and, and then I'll say this, there's a lot of things that we could have said tonight, mm-hmm. all right? There's a lot of things, a lot of different avenues. We could have gone deeper in some, um, but we really felt like these are things, these four things are broad. You I mean, you could fit a lot of these things in here and, you know, there's different words that you could say that just define or mark what a friendship looks like, you know, but if we miss it being rooted in the gospel and the fact that Jesus is our greatest friend and every relationship should be marked by the, by the um, I guess the, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but it should be marked by the reality that we've been in the presence of Jesus. You know, that's, that's the greatest prayer that I have for Suzanne. It's the mm-hmm. greatest prayer that I have for my kids. It's the greatest prayer that I have for mm-hmm. my close friends and even the people that I'll, I'll meet one day. You know, I, I want them to have been with Jesus. And, and things happen beyond our uh, abilities when, when mm-hmm. we've been with Jesus. So, um, you know, that, that's tonight. That's the friendships. That's um, where we're at. Next week, we go to the home. But here, here's what I want to do tonight. I know that... You know, originally um, there was a little movement um, to get everybody to go to Tanner tonight at 730 to pray. And then uh, I guess, you know, um, some wisdom came out and it was good wisdom that, no, look, we're supposed to be sheltering in place. Here's some great things like if if we need to do those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the government, I mean, we need to trust them in this. I mean, it's almost a common sense thing now. Um, like if you stay at home and, and do what these, the, the, the doctors and, and the medical folks are saying, this thing could be over a little bit sooner. Um, and here's the fear. Fear is the worst is yet to come as far as the sickness goes, as far as the virus goes. So what we want to do is, is, I mean, we're a little bit past. It's only 740. We're not going to keep you till 8. Um, but I want to I wanna read a psalm, um, and then I want us to pray. I want Andrew to pray, you know, mm-hmm. just for... Um, the people that we have up at Tanner. We're pr- praying nationwide, but s- specifically for Tanner. And I don't want to go to listing people from our church that work up there uh, or up there because we know that that list is, um, is long. And what I may do is I think I've got a, a chat where somebody sent out you know, uh, a list of all these. But again, we'll forget some people, so we don't. But we know that we've got direct ties just from our student ministry of people who are up there That's daily. Right working in the midst of this. And so we need to pray for the folks at Tanner, for the doctors. I mean, not just for the doctors and the nurses, but the people that are up there, you know, in the trenches, so to speak. Uh, And then even for our people who work in situations to where, you know, their bosses, I mean, it's an essential need Mm -hmm. and they're having to go out to work every day. And so that's only heightening the risk that they have of obtaining this. And so uh, we want to pray for that. But here's Psalm 46. I just want to read it. It's, It's long. Um, we're officially done, so if you want to if you want to check out, that's fine. But we would love for you um, to read this with us and then pray along with us. Andrew will be praying, um, but then we encourage you to also you you be praying for uh, the people you, you know names. Um, here, here was a scary stat that I heard at the beginning. It wasn't a stat; it was just a, a comment that said, "By the time this is over, you're going to number one know somebody who uh, you know has this virus, and number two more than likely you're going to know somebody who passes away from this. Mm -hmm. That's come through in my life, you know, over the last week. And, um, you know, for a lot in our church, especially with the first one, and then also for the second one, now that Carroll County, I believe, has has two deaths just here in Tanner. But this is is a nationwide, a worldwide thing. And it's crazy. I'm still numb to it. Um, But there is hope in the midst of this, right? When we say something like... You know, this virus is like the worst is yet to come in a mm-hmm. sense. And we hear President Trump mention this thing to where it's like by the time this is over, you know, nearly 100,000 deaths in the United States. It doesn't sit well with me. And, you know, it's like, all right, what can I do in this? Mm-hmm. Well, I can stay at home. <clears throat> you know, I can stay at home and, and, and do what I'm supposed to do. That doesn't rock my world. Mm-hmm. It doesn't shake my foundation. Because my foundation is not in this body. My foundation is not in this world. My foundation is not what a doctor tells me. Foundation is in the Word of God. And, and so I want to end our time together mm-hmm. by just let, letting the Word of God declare itself. And then Andrew praying. And then we'll see you tomorrow for our lunch hangout at Zoom. Hang out, give away some more stuff, and um, be together. But this is, this is Psalm 46. And the psalmist um, entitles this, or it is entitled... Um, God is our fortress. 
And it says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Mm. Therefore, or so then, we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Selah. Let's just take a minute. Rest. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God or the people of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations or the situations, they rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Pause. Recognize. Come. Behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob Mm. is our fortress. So we leave you with that word. In this prayer. And we love you. We miss you. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll see you tomorrow at lunch. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your grace, your mercy. Uh, Everything you do for us, Father, we are so undeserving. And you you know it better than we do. And so, Father, we pray for... Um, We pray for Carrollton, Carroll County, Georgia, the United States. Lord, we pray for the world. We pray that you would help get this coronavirus under control. Lord, none of this takes you by surprise, but Father, we we submit this prayer to you, Lord, that you would um, take care of us, Father, that you would protect us, that you would help the scientists, that you would help the doctors, the nurses um, treat and, 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 and help them to be wise as they care for those. Lord, help us to be wise. Help us to be wise in, in playing our own part. Um, one, in maintaining good health and, 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 and being wise in how we interact with others. But, Father, help us to want to pray for this, Lord. We know that you care about what is going on in your people's lives. And so, Father, we do pray for these things. Lord, we pray um, for the Rock Student Ministry. We pray for Rootville Row. We pray for the surrounding churches around us, Father, that you would strengthen us, that you would give us ideas to continue to connect, to continue to share the gospel, to continue to share um, the great love that, that you've shown to us through your son, Jesus. Lord, help us to grow in spiritual maturity. Help us to not waste um, this shelter in place. Father, we have so much time at home right now, so much um, boredom, it seems. Lord, help us to fill those times with things that will glorify you. Grow us through this time. Father, life has never seemed slower in a way. Help us to recognize that you are in this. Father, help us to give our lives to you daily. Lord, we love you so much. We are so undeserving, um, but Father, you are all deserving. And so we, we pray this in your son's holy name, in your name, amen. Hey, let's end with a, a Grammy Altman comment. Can we Grammy. end there? Grammy Altman, is, she's in the house. Here's what she says. Oh, no. Well, hold on. No, I've also got an Aunt Kay. Like, I've okay. got an aunt that's just watching. I don't you know if she's still it. there. She got any? You got well, a, she just said that, that I had the mannerisms of my Papa Altman. Oh. This is way more profound than this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Grammy Altman says, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. Hmm. It's all about Jesus. Hey, this week, today, text a friend that you're thankful for. Um, begin a, an accountability relationship in the friendships that you, that you don't have right now. Hey, we love you guys. We miss you guys. Uh, we'll check you tomorrow at 12. Yep. Peace. Love you guys, and uh, we'll see you there.